How's it going? We are working today on Kineo. It seems more and more like we're getting a Vision Pro announcement any day now. And uh, it's terrifying. It's honestly terrifying. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I am not at all ready for that. Uh, it's rapidly beginning to look like I'm going to have to ship an app that kind of just doesn't do much. Which makes me sad. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think we got to knock out the last couple features. And then, honestly, I, th I think the big thing is going to be that we're going to ship an app that has no monetization. It's going to be just a completely free app. Which is a little bit weird because you're kind of going to get some features for free that I charge for in the iOS app. I almost wonder if I should make this a paid up front app on Vision Pro just because I, I don't have time to build in the paywall. I don't know. Open to thoughts from people. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think we got to finish shipping the actual app and then worry about charging for it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what is that that we're doing to uh, actually ship the app? I think we're gonna need a little bit of playing with it and, and running back through things. But I think the big one is a free trial period. Yeah, that's, that's probably worth it. How's it going, Mono? Yeah, I mean, honestly, maybe like, yeah, very much say like, hey, this app is free until I figure out how to charge money for it. Because I think the big couple things are going to be I don't know. The, the the two big things that I charge for on iOS are being able to use Zoom and being able to uh, export without a watermark. So I think there's a couple different issues with that here. Um I don't have a watermark implemented, so that's going to be uh, something that's hard for me to charge to get rid of when it doesn't exist in the first place. And zooming is uh, zooming in Vision OS is literally just pulling the thing closer to you. So uh, that's a problem. That, that's not really uh, something that I control in Vision OS. It's just you, you want it bigger, you just bring it closer to your face. So that's not really something that I can charge for in Vision OS. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to hear what people think would be worth charging for in this app. What what to put behind the thing? Hey, thank you for the sub that didn't go to the right audio source, but that's because I rebooted it so that you know it would work, and then I forgot to actually select where it should go. My bad. It's no equal nut, but it's honest work. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's the big one is figuring out like what is worth monetizing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Again, we got to figure out what's left in the app before we figure out what I can lock behind a paywall. Unfortunately, as much as, you know, I would like to make money off of all of the work that I've done with this app. Uh, it's it's not going to do anything unless I have an app that people can use at all. Sorry, I'm realizing there's something wrong with my camera. Hold on. A little bit more space. So that I'm not cut off over here. Wonder if in-app payments work well in Vision OS. Yeah, I don't actually even know what the in-app purchase flow looks like in Vision OS. I have no idea. I mean, I'm assuming that it's mostly handled by StoreKit because that's what it is done in uh, 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 Vision OS. Do you touch your head to complete payment? Hang on, let me see if I can answer this question.
Yeah, no, okay. They, they said what it would be. It actually scans your iris. And uh, that is how it determines whether or not you're agreeing to, to pay. You have to double tap the power button on iPhone? Yeah, on iPhone, that's what you have to do. And yeah, I would assume it's something similar to that on Vision Pro. I, I, again, I haven't used that particular part of it, so I don't know. I didn't have that built. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. But again, let's let's finish the app before we go down that rabbit hole. Uh, I think the big two things that we've got left to finish are the layers view and... Wait, didn't I fix this one? Film strip has incorrect background color? Did it just not merge? It didn't merge. Why didn't it merge? <sighs> well, I guess we're going to figure that out first. The big... Yeah, so the big two things that I got to finish up are the layers view and the 3D video export. And I think the 3D video export is like the main thing that people are going to care about. Like that's going to be, oh, hey, you know, like check out this app because uh, it allows you to create spatial videos that are on your own and like that are drawings that are this kind of thing. And that is, I think, going to be kind of the big selling point of the app is being able to do 3D exported video. And so, yeah, that's that's kind of like the one big remaining feature. So I think... Honestly, focusing on that more than focusing on layers. Well, that's the problem. Because <laughs> layers is how you do 3D stuff. That's worth an Apple feature? I mean, I would hope so. That's the other thing I really need to do is I really need to start showing this off to people. I really need to start posting pictures of this to threads, to social media, to Mastodon. Or, or you know, maybe posting it to threads and getting other people to share it to Mastodon because I have zero Mastodon following. Um... Mostly because I've put zero effort into Mastodon. Uh, I don't know. There's there's just so many things, and it seems like the time is going to be much less time than I thought I had originally planned. You know, I, I originally thought that, you know, Apple's early 2023. You know, when Apple says early 2023, they mean May, not end of January. No, it's a July. That's, 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 that's further away. I would, I would like it to be July. Uh, all right. So it seems like our problem right now is, and sorry if I'm bouncing around. Our problem right now is that the iOS app doesn't build. And so that's why it won't merge. So we should build the iOS app to uh, fix our issues. But yeah, I mean, I, I would... I would think that that would be the kind of thing that would get Apple's in interest is saying, hey, you know, I built a thing that lets people create spatial video that is not just another recording, the real world type thing, which I mean, most apps can't even do. Because you can't, you don't have access to the camera except through Apple's particular camera stuff. So I don't know. All right, skin generator. Yeah, we changed this. Let's go take a look at our. Uh, let's go take a look at our diff for this merge request, because we definitely changed some of the names of these things. Yeah, we created a brand new preview image generator. Let's uh, let's use that instead. One issue down. Easy peasy. All right. Uh. What do we got here? No type of canvas background color. So I think that this was the problem and that here on iOS, we want there to always be a canvas background color fallback that is this like off white color. And then on Vision OS, we didn't want that. So we got rid of this canvas background color so that we could have fallbacks elsewhere. And I think that we need to have those same fallbacks on the phone now. So what did we do here? 
The fallback color when a document has no background color. That's in preview image generator. It's called variable name. Thank you, Adam Wolf. Uh, do we have anything else that is maybe doing? Because, yeah, like, where is variable name used? document.struct your stuff batman or variable <laughs> yes that's the one so we need document struct your stuff batman or some kind of fallback which is what also do i have all of the things included or do i still owe this name is spelled wrong I do still owe that one. Okay. So that's our first uh, variable rename of the new year. So yeah, right here we've got this fill. And I think that that's going to be our what we need here is that we need this or whatever our fallback is, which in here is asset.canvasbackground.color. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where we're going to go here. Editing play view is going to be document dot struct your stuff Batman or asset dot canvas background dot color. Yeah? Okay. I think we're gonna use that in most of these places. Export editing canvas background view, same deal. Boop. GIF provider. Uh, this one's a CG color, but I think that's fine. But let's go ahead and... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and use our variable name here. Private static var private static let? No. Private static funk background color for document document CG color so basically I want somewhere to extract this because that's gonna be a lot weirder in line uh, guard let background color. oh of course I just said private static funk I'm, I'm not gonna read it the name basically uh, it's a variable name, so it'll be right here. Guard let this, what was it? This name is spelled wrong. Why is uh why is GIF background image generator not in its own file? Let's, let's fix that. Perfect. things do we need in here UI kit so we can go back here and we can drop style phone because we don't need that one now uh, do we need data or mobile core services we almost certainly need data because otherwise it doesn't know what a document is uh, sorry data phone I don't know why I typed document even though I clearly said out loud that it was data December 22nd. This 
Name is spelled wrong. By Adam Wolf. On. Is that is that by at yeah on on 2023 12 22 the background the specified background color for the document if it has one and eh, let's drop specified all right this name is spelled wrong there Perfect. Alrighty. That exists now, so can we build? We still cannot build. Cannot find asset in scope. So we didn't import style phone over here. Perfect. Alright. Next one. Dismissal director. Canvas snapshot background color. Yeah, same deal. Okay, uh. I think again this one we're gonna we're gonna pull out. But uh editing view controller dot document. Yeah, we'll pull this one out. This'll be uh perform complete. Yeah, so we'll we'll put a new one down here that's like mark data Private funk background color for document. Is that what we called it in the other one? And this is a CG color. Okay, so. Dang it. I think I have moved my keyboard like half an inch the wrong way and now everything is screwed up uh black here yeah let's grab this copy this copy this copy that put that there this name is spelled right Attribute private can only be used in a non-local scope. Oh, I screwed that up, didn't I? Uh, how many curly braces do I have, and is it too many? Yes. There we go. All right. Background color for document. That is going to be used up here. Equals background color for editing view controller dot document. Perfect. All right, next one. That's much, so much easier. There we go. Document dot struct your stuff, Batman, or. This one's like borderline. Tempting to spend points on Australian spellings of words. Interesting. Data style phone. Sorry, not data phone. Yeah, I mean, this is basically the same thing as the other one. Well, no, it's because I'm not using the set background color. So, yeah, I'm going to just do this. Yeah, this is the one where it got too weird. Okay, we're just gonna copy this from uh Do we want right or wrong here? This is a background image generator, so I'm gonna copy the one from background image generator. Color is just more personal when it has a bit of you in it. 
Don't know why I copied that. Wasn't important. Embedded binary is not signed with the same certificate as the parent app. Verify the embedded binary's target embedded binary targets code sign settings match the parent apps. Who cares? I mean, obviously I have to care, but oh, I had to recently nuke my profiles because they had all expired. Uh, specifically, the ones for Debigulator had expired. No, the certificate expired. That was the big deal. So, I think we need to go do some fast lane nonsense. There we go. Uh, bundle. Exec. Fast lane. Match. App Store. Meh, that's not right. Okay, ASDF is running. We have dot tool versions. Why are you telling me that I don't have bundler? Did that actually do anything? Apparently. Eh, eh. That should not be where my gems directory is. That's the problem. It's like my gem directory is wrong. Fastlane match is great when it works, but I feel like it takes the app confusing Apple certificate dance and makes it differently confusing instead of easier. Yeah. Uh, the difference I would argue, and and yeah, I'm starting to move off of Fastlane for a lot of stuff, but um, I would argue that the difference is it at least makes it consistent, which is not true of Apple's way of doing it. Uh, but yes, it is still not any less confusing. It just makes it a lot less likely to break at random. And in this case, it is broken at random, but that seems to be a Ruby problem and not a fast lane problem. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna just use not E shell. Hey, look how that just worked. So maybe not even a Ruby issue. That's just an Emacs issue. <laughs> That's just Emacs being Emacs. It just works. Yeah, exactly. It just works. How you doing, Eagle Knot? Did anyone ever use auto signing? No. It's a bad plan. Uh, I use auto signing through Xcode only for local development only uh, like at the very beginning of a project before I've set up any like to or anything. That's the only time I ever, ever use auto signing. As soon as I've got like fast lane or to or anything like that, like getting off of auto signing is one of the first things that I do. It's just too error prone. Okay. Got a bunch of provisioning profiles. Perfect. Let's go actually assign them. Doesn't look like I need to. Perfect. Even more perfect. Build. Build succeeded. All right. To the get page. All right. There's all of our changes. It's just Swift files. Perfect.
Yeah, I think Animal Wolf, what I'm going to try to end up doing is I'm going to try to do something that looks like fast lane match, or like at least behaves like fast lane match, but doesn't have all of the scripts around it, which seems to be the biggest problem with fast lane match. Oh good, now GitLab's broken. I started doing the migration to GitHub. I, I've I've decided that I am now officially like I'm done with GitLab. Um it has crossed me for the last time. I decided that I'm done with done with GitLab. Um and I started doing the migration, but it is a big migration. I've got a lot of projects in uh GitLab. And uh, I need to find somewhere for all of them to live. So it's going to take me a while to get off of it, but I think it's going to be worth it. I think it's going to be a better experience. More like Gone Lab, yeah. It just, the experience has been bad. I'm spending a, quite a bit of money to support GitLab these days. Because it's like, oh, I'm self-hosting. It's like, you know, I'm not paying for GitLab, but I am paying to have a host where the host only runs GitLab. And, uh, like a VPS that's only running GitLab. And that's not worth it to me anymore, given how much worse it is. It's, it's just, yeah, it's a bad experience. And, uh... I think, you know, GitHub has proven that they're better <laughs> right now. And uh, they've gotten better enough, or at least GitLab has gotten worse enough that it is now worth the effort to actually move it and just get off of GitLab. But it's a lot of projects to move. So it's going to be a minute. Will you be sending this breakup message publicly on socials? No, I don't think I will. Okay, this one built. Sweet. Does that mean we can merge this? And market is ready to remove from draft status. One of the nice things will be like the fact that a lot of this stuff is behind either Tuist or Basil or Fastlane or whatever is like moving to GitHub Actions is going to be dead simple. It's going to be nothing. I mean, here, let me let me pull up the uh, GitLab CI file for Kineo. Go run these three commands, and then depending on whether it's a release branch or not, either run this command or this command. That's it. It's 40 lines of YAML for GitLab. It's probably going to be about that same amount for GitHub. It is not going to be a problem, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, I mean, that's why I run my own Mac runner. Have you used Xcode Cloud? I have tried to use Xcode Cloud so many times. It's every single time I run into some minor issue that it just blocks me. I, I say minor issue. It's obviously not a minor issue if it's blocking me, but it's like some small thing that doesn't work. Um, for Kineo, I believe it was uh, something around um, uh, uh, bundle identifiers because in, in my day, you had bundle identifiers that each bundle identifier had its own like prefix to it and nowadays bundle identifiers are all prefixed with your team id well xcode cloud assumes that it is always prefixed with your team id and kineo being 15 15 15 years old uh has the old style bundle id and so xcode cloud just won't build it 
it's like, no, you, you can't have this. And uh, yeah, it's something that I can't work around and, and I don't know how to deal with it. So I can't use Xcode Cloud for that. Uh, black highlighter, I'm trying to remember what was wrong with black highlighter. I don't know. But yeah, those, I mean, those are my two big projects and both of them definitely had something along those same lines that it didn't work because of that. And yeah, I don't remember what the one for black highlighter was. It's been a while since I did that, but uh, it's it just, it, it doesn't work. And it's, it's, it's frustrating because everything that I've seen of it seems like, yeah, this is really nice. I would like to be able to use this, but I just, I always run into issues with it. And unfortunately, like, even for something, a small project like this, it's not, uh, I don't want to try to have to maintain it. Hey, Escaminia, how you doing? I've got enough problems with my apps that I don't want to have to maintain a CI system that's as flaky as Xcode Cloud is. <laughs> Do we have this merged yet? Issues resolve. Yeah, that one. Cool. Okay, so that's merged. So now, <laughs> now let's uh, get into. Um, yeah, if you can't use it for everything, it's not worth it using a different CI for each one. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely also a big part of it. It it that wasn't really what I was trying to get at, but oh god, I just destroyed tablet. Sorry. Um, I, I reached my arm out and I hit the edge of my desk and there was uh, the trackpad for my streaming machine. The the Apple Magic trackpad was there and I nearly like just karate chopped it off the desk. Uh, what I was getting at more is like the way that they've been flaky, it's been almost like it'll maybe work. Like one thing will be broken one day, one thing will be broken the next day, one thing will be broken the next day. And it's just not stable enough to build on. That's, that's been the other part of it. Even if I could get it to work one day, I'm not sure it would continue working ongoing. All right. Let's build an actual app now. App, actual feature, as opposed to just continuing to uh, try to mess with some other stuff. I've got this redesigned layers view thing was it at least fast it was pretty fast it was decently fast I'll, I'll admit that and yeah like the experience the the ui is great um the setting it up so much nicer than dealing with yaml files uh you know you just got stuff in xcode um but yeah the The, 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 the back end of it, I guess. Just, it wasn't working. All right. Uh, what do I have left here that's tagged Vision OS? Redesign Layers View seems to be the big one. We've got an existing merge request for this. I think we're going to throw that one away because it's probably pretty old. And we're just going to kind of come back to it again. Maybe we'll take a look at it. Eh, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look like we made all that much changes. We changed our offset. We changed the rotation effect. And we don't like get some weird stuff going on here. Uh, maybe we can build based on this. Yeah, maybe we can continue to use this. We'll, we'll see what it takes to get this merged back up to date. And then maybe we'll work on that. Only 25 compute hours for free for a month? I mean, that seems like a decent amount. It's 25 hours, not 25 minutes. And it's not divided by 10 like uh, GitHub is. <laughs> What does GitHub give you per month? 
Not that much, right? GitHub Pro gives you 3,000 minutes per month, which is 50 hours. But for a Mac, that's divided by 10. So it's actually only five hours. And that's if you're paying for GitHub Pro. If you're doing it for free, that's 33 minutes, or sorry, 33 hours or three hours if you're uh, using Mac. So I would say they're, they're at least competitive. And then, yeah, you got to pick like different VCPUs. I don't remember what the VCPUs for Xcode Cloud is. Well done, website. It's got however many uh, this says. Well, somebody else can look that up and uh, tell us because apparently this website doesn't want to load for me. All right, let's uh, let's pull down this change. What's the branch name? 285 redesign layers view. We're going to need to rename this branch too. It's not going to be 23.5. It's going to be 24.0. But we'll uh, we'll do that later. Yeah, look at this. We're 53 commits behind. Oof. Uh, let's first pull from origin. Make sure we got everything remote. We do. All right. Let's do a merge. See what happens. Get failed. Hit dollar sign to see the thing. Uh, only one failure in editing view.swift. This could be less bad than we think it is. What do we got? Okay. That's, that's honestly not too bad at all. Let's, let's do it in Xcode, but... That could be a million times worse. All right, on a peer. We added this update window geometry. Yada, yada. If GitHub could change that 10x to 3x like Windows or even 5x, it'd be nicer. Yeah, but considering that they... Oh, here's the other benefit. Sorry, I forgot about this one. Uh, Apple, Xcode Cloud. They get the new versions of macOS immediately, as opposed to over a year later, like GitHub does. That's the other big benefit over GitHub for Xcode Cloud stuff. You just get it. It's there. It's done. There have been a number of times with GitHub where, because uh, we, we use them for work, um, where it's like, Hey, you know, the new version of Xcode is out and it requires the newest version of macOS and you still have not enabled that for our use cases. Please help. And uh I don't know what they want us to do. All right, what do we got going on here? Um they're pretty good for Xcode 15 but still no Sonoma. Yeah, they're usually pretty good about the Xcode versions. But yeah, no Sonoma. When did Sonoma come out? September. That's been four or five months. They probably still won't come out for another four or five months. That's all, always how it's been. They have never once gotten that out in a reasonable amount of time. Maybe GitHub uses Xcodes. It's entirely possible.
Yeah, we need to get Matt to just build a Mac OS's. So we added this new version. I don't understand what's going on here. We added this new version called Update Window Geometry. So basically, hang on. We have one that's called Update Window Geometry, and we have one called Set Window Geometry. And that seems to be our big difference here. Do we want it to be called Update Window Geometry, or do we want it to be called Set Window Geometry? That really is the big change of what we got here. Maybe GitHub still uses ChatGPT 3.5 for what is the highest Mac OS version available. Maybe we need a poll. Update window geometry or set window geometry? I'm thinking update. I like update better. Let's stick with update. That also seems to be what the current value is. That's head. Hang on. Release is set. Yeah, I like update better too. Yeah, let's stick with update. Or Xcode's just going to be like, nah, you don't get either one. Update if it's called more than once, set otherwise, it is called more than once. It's called every time we change what window we have. Which in theory shouldn't be multiple times, but I think in practice is. Hang on. We're taking the top one here and the bottom one on the other one. Eh, whatever. Not that big of a deal. Okay, stage, finish our merge. Hooray. All right, let's push that up. Rename's name a function to do update windowy thing. Set window update geometry. Set set window to use updated geometry how's that one Did that not push there we go that pushed it forever to go through why who knows probably because gitlab is weird Set set date window geo update now, please. Set date. Yeah, GitLab, you cannot be this slow. This is why I'm leaving you. Could not retrieve the pipeline status. I just want to know what changes have been made. Why Why do you still only say two commits? Okay, kids. Let's, let's go through this thing. Okay, now it says three commits. I was going to say. One, two, three. But, but now it does actually say three. Yeah, we, we changed it. Also, hold on. We left in this old value, new value. We need to get rid of that. Think of all the Swift packages you'll be able to ship publicly. I mean, I already ship things publicly from GitLab. It's not a problem. No one imports filthy GitLab packages. Well, yeah, nobody uses my packages. That's not the point. 
All right, let's go ahead and run this and see what we've got. I also said I want to get a like beta build of this app out that people can run. Oh no. Here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start, we're gonna close this project. I'm gonna close this project too, because that's too big later, and I have no idea why it's even open. Uh, I want you to get a beta version of the app out and make it so that people can add it to their simulators. You know, it, it'll have to be for other developers because obviously nobody has a Vision Pro to test this on. <laughs> but if you wanted to put it in the simulator and then be able to draw animations, like test animations that I, I can use to, uh, you know, maybe show, like put as like demo content in the apps. I think that'd be fun. Because definitely a lot of people were giving recommendations of like, hey, you should have this as a demo uh, animation. You should have this as a demo animation. And like, I should have that as a demo animation, but I can't draw. So I send that to uh, other people who can draw and uh, th they can uh, make their animation exactly the way they want it. As opposed to being like, hey, you should draw, blah, blah, blah. And I draw this like terrible. I mean, you've seen my drawings in this app. They're not good. I, I drew uh, compiled dev and it was it was scary. And not a good scary. It was just it was just bad. That detection was factually accurate. Facts and uh, talent are... They're, they're not... Uh, 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 they, they're, they're, they're not entirely orthogonal. That's not the word I'm looking for. But, you know... One does not need to... One can be factually correct without being aesthetically pleasing. Let's put it that way. Oh, does undo not work? Sweet. Do I have it marked somewhere that undo doesn't work? No. Cool. Awesome. Oh, Okay, what were we working on? Oh yeah, the eight layers view. Yeah, exactly. Get bisect time? No, I know exactly where that failed. Okay, so we're still running into the issue where this is sticking out beyond that view. I, I think that's really going to be we got to fix that so i think that's probably related to one of the changes that we actually saw though yeah let offset equals index and then here we said index minus two but i think in this case we want it to be we want it to remain index because otherwise it won't be behind the thing so drawing view layer button, that's Swift. Drawing view layer button. Is it hard to create an LLC for shipping stuff into the App Store? Uh, it wasn't for me in a different state 15, 16 years ago. Uh, I am about to do it again. So I'll let you know. Oh, no. That also didn't do what I wanted. Okay, so we can just perfectly undo that one. Uh, where's our offset in the Z layer? That's actually not what we want. So that, there's, there's a problem. Uh, 
Uh, we rotate it. Blah, blah, blah. See, where is, it? where is this? Drawing view layer button. Drawing view layer button. Drawing view layer button. Where do we actually use this? That's okay. So that's not where we have our realm. Drawing view layers mode. We have a Z stack. And then we do offset it. Crap. Okay. We offset this. Indexed layers dot count. Where do you all get your terms and conditions and privacy policies from? Uh, there was a episode of the podcast under the radar with Marco Arment, who does the uh, Overcast podcast player, and David Smith, who does a bunch of different apps, but he's most well known for Widget Smith. Um, this was years ago. Um, and Marco basically said, Hey, I had a lawyer draft up my privacy policy and I'm very confident in it. And I give everybody listening to this podcast episode permission to just wholesale copy it. So guess what I did? That's exactly what I did. I wholesale copied it. I was like, Hey, that sounds like a great offer. So I'm stealing it. Should I get Escaminia to do it for us? Oh yeah, Escaminia is a lawyer, right? But yeah, I mean, I basically took the Overcast license and I changed it to be accurate for mine. And that's what I use everywhere. So, kinyo.app slash privacy. There it is. You can't go around accusing people of being lawyers in public. Here's Black Highlighters. It's a little bit more uh, in-depth. And yeah, I give everybody permission to steal mine as well. I don't uh, give you the same, I have absolute confidence in my privacy policy, but uh, I stole from someone who was confident and I don't think I did anything too terribly wrong with it, so. Wait, did that actually, did, was that a thumbs up? I don't know if it, people saw it in the Discord. Hey, if you're watching this and you're not in the Discord, you should join the Discord. Um, that I had a video of, or a, a thumbnail from um, one of my previous streams where I did a thumbs up, but I had done it like, back here and it wasn't there and so it looks like I'm just going to punch somebody. Did you steal it pre-GDPR? I feel like it was post-GDPR. GDPR is pretty old at this point, right? But no, I don't remember. Definitely pre-CCPA. So, there's that. I don't know. Let's go look at the overcast privacy policy and see what they got now. Oh god, why is it so bright? Why, 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 why are you not darkening this web page? Okay, Marco's website is such that it it's very aggressive. Okay, yeah. Well, this is Kappa. This is not. Wait, what? This is Kappa. This is CCPA. But for some reason, there's also the letter O in there. Is it? No. CCPA? California Consumer Privacy Act. What is this? California Online Privacy Protection Act. What is this? I've never heard of that. Kalapa. I've never heard of this one. See, this is this is why we need uh, Escaminia to be the official lawyer of the Dev Club Discord. A 
According to the Act, the operator of a website must post a distinctive and easily found link to the website's privacy policy, commonly listed under the heading Your California Privacy Rights. I mean, I definitely post a distinctive and easily found link to the website's privacy policy, but it is not listed as Your California Privacy Rights. Website only has to be accessible by California residents. Which, I mean, yeah, mine are. But it, it looks like he also doesn't. I mean, he says that he's... Uh, 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 compliant. But his does not say your California privacy rights. See, now we're just going to be sitting here and, and worried about this. Uh, California Privacy Consumer Privacy Act gives customers... No, okay, so this is CP, CCPA. This is different. This is... Okay, yeah. Y'all got me worried now. CCPA has a pretty high bar. We've all had to deal with it at work. Yeah, we had to deal with it at work, too. What do you mean by high bar? the right to know about the personal information a business collects about them has annual gross revenues exceeding 25 million. Nope. Oh. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I barely have annual gross revenues exceeding $25. No, that's not true. I can make a little bit more than that. Uh, $2,500. No. Exceeding $25 million annually buys, sells or shares personal information from a hundred thousand or more consumers a household. Also definitely not true and drives at least 50% of its annual revenues from the sale of personal information. Don't do that either. Bro, you're making $25? Okay, so I don't have to worry about CCPA is what you're telling me. And that's official legal advice from Eagle Knot. Legal Knot is what we call him. Uh, by using Overcast and providing your information, you authorize us to collect, use, and store your information outside of the European Union. Yeah, so I definitely uh, stole this somewhere else around here. I don't know. You can pass the bar in California? But that sounds like you haven't yet passed the bar in California. I've passed all kinds of bars in California, but I walked right past them. If you ship over jailbreak, yeah, no. I'm not gonna be doing that. All right, what were we doing? We were doing this. We were trying to figure out why this wasn't working. And I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm worried that this is about the rotation. That's what I'm worried about. Let's go into here and let's disable our rotation. And see if we still got this problem. No, no we do not. We got this problem again though. I don't know what happened there. Why we've got this weird square. Sometimes we have a weird square. I don't know why that happens. When you download this app, your soul is ours, no reimbursement. <laughs> Legal advice given to you by an eagle making it binding in the U.S. Sounds right. Yeah, I think this is going to be the issue here. I think... We were telling it to rotate. And because we were telling it to rotate. It pops out beyond that bottom part. And that's not what we want. So either we make it rotate the other direction. Away from this thing. Or... Use Termsly.io for fans lineup. Yeah, I, I've definitely known of a lot of those types of things. I don't know. Let's see if those have uh, 
Kalapa stuff. Try for free. Maybe this isn't the one. Oh, yeah, I don't want to create an account. Privacy policy generator. Mobile app. App privacy policy generator dot firebase dot app. Now here's Termly, but that was the one that made us do a uh, thing. An account. Get started for $5 a month. No. Don't wanna. The Firebase one is the one you currently use? Nice. I think this is the one I've seen before. Eagle Knots. 100% legal app. How many new policy generators are there since ChatGPT? <laughs> Hang on, we'll, we'll 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 come back to that one. Uh, contact information. This this is a uh, 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 legal at eagle not dot com. Personally identifiable information. Uh, shoe size. Uh, 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 uh. Teeth size. Whether you are allergic to bees. Don't worry about it. App type. Uh, definitely ad supported. Mobile OS, iOS. You know, that doesn't work on any Android apps. Policy effective date, yeah, sure, tomorrow. Uh, owner type. Definitely owned by an individual. Developer name, Eagle Knot. Eagle Nut. Okay, now what? There's no click a button to do stuff. Because I screwed this up off. No. Oh, hey, there's a button there. Okay, cool. Uh, let's turn that back on. There we go. They're just hidden. Okay. Uh, Eagle Knot uses Flurry Analytics. It's definitely true. Uh, does not use Google Play services. Why would you do that? Um. And yeah, good deal. You use Flurry Analytics and Godot. And here's privacy policy. Nothing about Kalapa at all. Including but not limited to shoe size, teeth size, whether you're allergic to bees. Don't worry about it. Okay, yeah, no. I mean, this seems about right. All right, next test. Just use the state that I will also collect the teeth if you delete your app. Hey, I mean this seems this seems pretty legit.
I don't, I don't see it. Uh... Oh, yeah, here we go. Specifically, we share your information with Ducks Quarterly Magazine. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. GPT-based uh, privacy policy generation built into the developer duck app. We collect information regarding your affinity for ducks. This includes your preferences, interests, and other related information that helps us tailor our app to your liking. And it's even in Markdown. You can just you can just export this right out. A duck wouldn't lie to you. Can you rewrite this? But with enough loopholes that I could, if desired, use it for evil. <laughs> no. Okay, ducks won't lie to you. If you have any other programming related questions or need assistance with a project that is ethical and lawful, yeah, I should have had quack mode on. I turned that off when I was using it to write uh, my cover letters for stuff. Oh, oh, no. No, I turned it off when I was using it to translate uh, app reviews. That, that was it. Remember how I said I was running out of time and I, I should be... ...working on my app? <laughs> this one's much shorter than the other one. good okay let's go back to, let's go back to doing actual development work uh so the rotation effect that's that's the problem um can we do it this way honestly that's not the worst uh, it's a little bit the worst one, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I just, I don't, um, probably a lot. Probably a lot, Mono. I just really don't know how to design this thing. This is the problem. I I don't know what to do with this those layers UI. This has been the number one design issue that I've had with this app this whole time, and I keep putting it off because I know it's a pain. Do you need a seizure warning for Vision OS apps? Not if you're not doing anything ridiculous. I mean, I'm sure that if you are doing like a video game or something that has flashing effects, then probably in the same way that any video game has that, 
I mean, most most video games will do something like that. Dark mode only. There's no such thing as dark mode on Vision OS. Doesn't exist. No dark mode. Yeah, see, this is what I was kind of trying to copy here. But I don't really know how to do something like this and make it obvious which one is more in front of the other one. Does that make sense? I really want to be able to say, I've got these layers here. Well, this only currently overlaps the toolbar because it, that's that's a different toolbar. That's a, that's a, that's Kineo. These are different apps. Uh, it is interesting though that yeah, their toolbar is up top. Yeah, they're also not doing like a three. I mean, they're doing a three D effect in that they're like folding it out. But yeah, it was on top of Kineo. That's what that's what the issue was. Kineo's over there now. Yeah, I I mean I think that if this were up here, yeah, then you would get that kind of collision. But that's why it's not up there. And so maybe that's the problem. Maybe I just need to give it more of an offset from that bottom edge. Yeah, let's let's uh let's bring Kineo back. Let's let's we're we're done with this for now. Let's let's close Safari. Let's uh bring this back the way that we had it. And then yeah, maybe the problem is just that we didn't give ourselves enough space there. And then really, yeah, this is the other problem that we've got here is that this has like these are almost not visible enough. And the the Safari one here, let's pull Safari back up again. That wasn't the button I wanted to hit. Beep. The Safari one uses the like fully translucent the, the the you can see the whole glass background effect whereas we don't do this on that one the problem is if we do that on this one then you're going to cover up the content of the ones behind it so i don't think we can get away with doing like a full background effect on these I don't know. Design is hard for a platform where the only thing you can see being designed for it is like the four apps that ship with it.
Hang on, I have a stupid idea. No, that's not gonna work. Never mind. I had a stupid idea and then I immediately realized it was too stupid. What I was thinking is there's, um, I need to find like a modal view. Yeah, here we go. So see how it like pushed that to a further spot? What I was like, oh, what if I open like five modal views on top of each other? But the problem is once you do that, you can't interact with the ones behind it. So that's not really gonna work. But yeah, that would be one way to do that is to just like shove everything to the back. That's not really what we want. I really want to steal ideas from apps that exist already, but there's not a whole lot of them. Makes it a lot harder to do, uh, steal ideas from things when they don't exist. There's just nothing that has like a hierarchy to it. You know what I mean? It's also coming soon. I mean, you do have this kind of panel here. Which, A, I don't even know how to build a panel like this. I mean, obviously this is uh, open source, so I could just look at it. And by open source, I mean it's sample code. I mean, that might be worth looking at. Like, the problem is like, I, I, none of these really communicate the idea of this is in front of the other thing. And I think even if you did this, you're almost going to run into the issue of does it look too much like the sidebar? Watch this be something that I can only get by using the uh, video player. That's that's almost certainly what is going to happen there. You can't have this type of window. Only Apple can have this type of window. Apple's better than you.
Um, no, I, I could just search it in here. That would make way more sense. I don't know what it did there. That's interesting. What if we could do something like that? Where our toolbar is offset from the thing, but it's still clear in some cases that it's behind or in front of the thing. Is that a thing? I think this video info view is what it displays video details, action controls, label play video. Okay, no, hold on. That's, that's not what we're looking for, is it? Back to here. Yeah, no, that's these down here. So if we click play video, what does that do? The button player load video. Player. What is player? Player is player model yeah it's absolutely this is a thing with AV player boo Yeah, so how is up next handled? Boolean value that indicates whether the player should propose a thing, blah, blah, blah. So I figured it would be whatever that metadata was, yeah. Create metadata items. It doesn't really have that. Unless there's like I mean, there is, but that's not the right kind of queue. Logger debug, blah, blah, blah. Replace current item. No, that's not right. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, what is controlling the, like, up next? 
I'll pick something other than the Mystery Creek this time, just for mana. Yeah, what is controlling this here? Because we've got this up next, or this info. And that's got to be the uh, metadata stuff. Is it? I don't know. Here. We'll, we'll find an easy way to... Hello, world. We'll see if that changes anything. Basically running this on the uh, iPhone and not the Apple Vision Pro. That help. Oh, up next view. Hang on, what's this? A view that displays a list of movies related to the currently playing content. Video list view. Okay, what, what uses this? That seems like a much better idea. System player view. Is a UI view controller representable? It is, in fact, on AV player controller. Custom info view controllers equals up next view controller. So, yeah, that is something that we really only have because of. Built in stuff. So, yeah, we can't control that. Boo. Because that would have been a fun one. Like, we have something that comes out from underneath our view. We have that there. And then maybe that has the layers view. I don't know, man. Am I overthinking this? Am I underthinking this? Am I correctly, appropriately thinking this? Because freeform, I mean, it has layers, obviously, because you can put things in front of other things. 4K no loss does. Yeah, I mean, we've got this back and front. I mean, okay, so here, here let, let me let me think about this. We've got this back and front level. What if we just make that something that, keep the UI you have, adjust the tool offset so it doesn't clip the toolbar and ship it. I mean, literally just this. The problem with this one is that it's still... <sighs> yeah, I guess there really isn't a problem with this one, is there? Yeah, you're right. Maybe I should just stick with this and then come back to it later. If, you know, once the app ships, you know, then I will have more companies to steal from. Okay, yeah, no, you make a good point. Fill it with content so you can see what it looks like with drawings instead of only window backgrounds, yeah. I mean, that, yes, but also... I, I do feel like people are going to have to see it. Like, 
this is the worst case scenario and we want people to see it or like we want it mm, what's the word i'm trying to use let's 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 try this again i want to make sure that in the worst case it's still understandable and right now i don't know that that's true i don't know what i'm doing i just need this to go to object eraser okay to object Georgia. In your opinion, artery looks great. I just, I don't know. For some reason, it, it doesn't feel right to me. But yeah, maybe, maybe it's fine. Uh, okay. So let's draw like, you know, and I, I think we have drawn. Actually, we may have already done this in the drawing of Peter. Where is that drawing? There we go. I think we did do this one in layers, right? Yeah, so that's what that looks like in the layers view. Do we just have our five layers? Oops. And yeah, you can see that they're in front of or behind each other. Actually, can we make our whole ornament just stick out further? That would be an easy solution to this problem. Drawing, view, editing mode. No. Yeah, here's our toolbar. Uh, toolbar, canvas toolbar content. I don't think we can get away with applying anything to this. So toolbar content is not a view. Yeah. So we can't apply an offset to our toolbar. I think that would be, yeah, one way of doing this, but. Wait, this isn't what we want. There's no like toolbar with offset. Toolbar visibility. Toolbar background. Yeah, okay, so. What we could do is we could add that extra spacing. So yeah, let's let's go look at our layers view. Yeah, no, that's actually just in our drawing view, right? Boop, boop. Drawing view layers mode has a different mode. We change our geometry preferences. But I guess what we're saying here is maybe we should add like an extra 60 points. And honestly, we only really need it in height, right? 962. What happens if we do that? Not quite enough. We're getting close. Is this just centered? Yeah, 
Yeah, because that, <laughs> that didn't fix it, did it? That, that didn't change anything. Oh, yeah, no, I guess it did. But yeah, I'm wondering if that's just offset Z. No, we don't want an offset Z. Or do we? Offset is this. We have an offset here. Offset plus self dot offset 2D. What is offset 2D? 100. That's too much. Let's just go ahead and say plus 60. Or is it minus 60? Okay, that clipped it up at the top. That's not what we want. Or is it what we want and I just did too much? No, that's still too much. There we go. That's what we're looking for, right? We get our picture of Peter. Yeah, I suppose that's right. Okay, it looks great. I don't know why I'm like unable to see it myself, but okay. If you say it looks great, it looks great. Uh, fix offset of layers buttons. I'm gonna ship this just so that we don't end up out of sync again. We're gonna go ahead and just say that that gets merged. And then I think the next thing that I need to do is I need to make the buttons, make clicking the buttons actually do something. Um, yeah, I need to make it actually animate in between the two layers. So I need to do, here, let's, let's start writing these issues down uh, while that's doing stuff. So layers view, we need to just vision us. We need to mark that. Boop. Um, make layers animate into view into out of view better matched geometry effect question mark. So yeah, let's call that that. Um, create the issue. Don't worry about it. Uh, match geometry effect. Split out into must have versus nice to have since the deadline is suddenly soon. Yeah, that's that's also fair. I need to go through and mark like what is. Uh, we got milestones in here, and I'll just I'll just do that. Um, what was the other one? I've now forgotten. Oh, uh, selecting. Player should close layers view. Um, I want to know if they like. Does it make sense to have something that like what is the currently selected layer? I think I might actually already have an issue for that. How to make, figure out how to make current layer more obvious. Yeah. Maybe that's not a big deal. But yeah, those are those other two seem to be the ones that are like, that's what I need to make this, the layers view done. I don't know. Uh, where's my merge request? Let's, let's, uh, that, okay, so that already passed. Yeah, let's mark that as ready and let's merge that. And then we can 
work on the next one. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick break. I will be right back. And I uh, hope to see you all in just a couple minutes. That's not the right button. Okay, let's get back into this and figure out. Sorry, God. Uh, yeah, I guess which one of these do we want to tackle first? Really, I think it's got to be the, you know, selecting layers should close the layers view. That feels like the obvious one to pick. Let's do that. Uh, right now, does it actually change anything? Let's let's create a new, or at least open a new view. So we're starting with it opening. It starts drawing on the background by default. Interesting. Did I make that choice deliberately or not? Okay, let's click the frontmost one, bring it back, and then open it again. Okay, so it doesn't actually do anything. Well, that seems like a problem. Okay, so drawing view layer button sets the active layer index and then sets the editing state to editing. But... This is dumb. <laughs> this, this is all it is right here. Self dot editing state. Boop. Boop. Uh, no, editing state equals editing state. No, this here, this here, then self dot editing state equals editing state. That's almost certainly all that we need to do to fix this. Draw the background. Click the front one. Draw the front one. Hey, look at that. It's almost like it did the thing that we uh, wanted it to do in the first place. Yeah, Emacs was the one that I wanted. Well, that was easy enough. I probably should have just checked that before uh, making a whole new branch, but that's how it goes sometimes. Are you going to create the merge request that I wanted you to create? There we go. to do that was so yeah that was all i needed to do self dot editing state equals editing state done that maybe shouldn't have been a whole extra ticket oh well That just gives us more time to work on the other thing. Oh yeah, we got another hour before I have to leave. Mark is ready. Uh, why can't I merge when pipeline succeeds? That button should exist. Choose your tickets close metric somehow. Exactly. Uh, pipelines must succeed. Yeah. Yeah. There definitely used to be a button that was like, go ahead and merge when everything's good. But apparently we don't have that anymore. Is 
Is it because it's pending and not running? That might be the problem. But why is it pending? Why is it not actually just running? This is also a thing that I've noticed with GitLab that I have not noticed with GitHub is that it'll just queue for a minute and 41 seconds for no reason. And I have no idea why, because I'm the only person using the box that is a uh, you my, my CI machine. My, my build agent is right, right, right there. And uh, nobody else is using it. So I don't know why we're queuing for two minutes behind nobody else. Okay, now that it's running, can I click the try, try fixing it button? Well, now it says ready to merge. Set to auto merge. Yeah, there. That's the button I was looking for. GitLab. Okay, so since we know that that wasn't that big of a change, we're not going to have any merge issues. We might as well just go ahead and do the make layers animate better button. Now, I have not used match geometry effect. Has anybody here actually used it? I know that it is a thing that exists. And I know it's the tool that I want for this job. I don't know how to actually use it. All right, matched geometry effect. What do we got? View. ID is ID, where ID is just hashable. So I'm thinking we just make each view ID its layer ID. Yeah. And then when we change it, that should be all we need to do. So what do we got? We got our drawing view layer button. It comes with a layer. That layer is an indexed layer. An indexed layer has a ID. So that's all we need. Uh, what if we just say matched geometry effect ID in namespace. So we need a namespace. We'll figure that one out. Uh, but right now I think our ID is just layer dot ID, right? That's great. Uh, namespace.id. What is a namespace? Pray tell. Dynamic property that allows access to a namespace defined by the persistent identity of the object containing the property, e.g. a view. Okay. Can I make this? Like an environment object? Why don't I consult? Hmm. Who do I want to consult? Do I want to consult hacking with Swift or do I want to consult the developer duck? Developer duck's been more helpful lately. Can you give me an example of using matched geometry effect on a nested view, highlighting the use of namespaces? Oh, at namespace. 
What is that? It says in animation namespace. So yes, it seems like I do need to forward it somehow. And there the namespace is namespace.id. So we use an at namespace, private var animation namespace. And then we have to pass it in. I mean, we could use an environment object for this, right? Or not object, but environment key, environment value. Because I don't, yeah, I don't want to have to pass this all the way that late, that down, that far down, Jesus. Because we want it at drawing view level, right? Drawing view, drawing view has, this is the wrong drawing view. I mean, that's not that bad. Yeah, let's just do it here. At namespace, private var namespace. So we get that, and then we pass that into editing mode and layers mode. Sure. And then we need a private let Okay, so we just do that. Well, no, 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 this isn't gonna work. Because what I realized is, yeah, then we would need to pass it down to here. I mean, that's not the end of the world. Or can we just put the match geometry effect on here? No, that's a much better idea. Let's just do that. Right? If I just put this here, matched, matched geometry effect, ID is indexed layer dot ID in namespace. Boom, that's that. Okay, what are you mad about? I have no idea what you're mad about. We're gonna come over here. You're not needed anymore. Candidate requires, I have no idea what you're upset about. I've got no idea what it's mad about. Let's go ahead and fix this one. Maybe that's the problem. Should get the new space drawing view. That was absolutely the problem. That error was nowhere near what it was putting it on, but whatever. My problem. Uh, for each layer, we have whatever this is. So we've got a group. The group has a frame. Let's give it a match geometry effect. Uh, in this case, it's going to be layer dot ID, which should be the same as index layer dot ID. I think we decided that, right? Yeah. So they will share IDs in namespace. Let's see if that just works, right? That'd be great. That did not just work. Bummer. How can we test this? 
How can we figure out whether or not it's... Ow. How can we figure out whether or not it's uh, setting the right values? So set that value there, and then let's go into layers mode. And then let's just put that there. Uh, except this is uh, layer. Cannot find layer. Yeah, that's because it's indexed layer. You doof. Okay, so that should give us Here we go. Editing layer, blah, 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 blah. Got a bunch of them. One, two, three, four, five different ones, as expected. Uh, let's just go ahead and type in the word layer and see what we get. More than I expected, actually. But there's our five. One, five, seven, two, four. So if we switch the layer to layers mode, we should still have one, five, seven, two, four. One, five, seven, two, four. 15724. So why didn't match geometry effect work? Is it possibly because we have no animation on this? <laughs> that might do it, right? Uh, how do we add an animation transition between two views? Okay, so with animation, we change our value. So I think that we would just need to do that on, we would need to surround our layers button with a with animation block, right? Let's try that. Uh, layers button, layers butt, layer butt, layer butt. Yeah, that's what we want, layer butt. All right. Uh, just surround it with, with animation. Sure. Hello. There we go. <laughs> well, it definitely animated something. Uh, I'm not really seeing any match geometry effects here, unfortunately. And then, yeah, we definitely have that weird, like, takes a minute to catch up. Oh, hey, I'm here. How do I fix that? Well, what's actually changing the size of the thing, right? I guess we can figure that out. How do you enable vision coding in Swift UI? Do you need another SDK? Yes, you do need another SDK. Uh, it currently only works in beta versions of the OS. So you, or sorry, not of the OS, of the um, Xcode developer tools. So you will need to make sure that you're running Xcode 15.2 beta and not like Xcode 15.1 which is out 
and released and shipped. Uh, if we go look at the Xcodes list. Yeah, you need to be running one of the ones that says beta since 15. Yeah, no problem. And 15.2 is the most recent one, so. Cat needs a Vision Pro headset. I mean, I'll, uh, I, I accept, uh, contributions. Emote contributions. Eagle Knot did the, uh, banned computers one. I'm sorry. I had to get rid of the chicken one. I have a, 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 uh, uh personal no politics policy so we had to get rid of canned chicken let underscore equals print layer index layer dot id okay these are all right On disappear. Yeah, this is our problem here. On disappear, we set our geometry preferences back. But on disappear isn't going to happen until we actually change that value. So maybe this isn't on appear and on disappear. This would be on change of editing mode. And we would almost put that on drawing view and not in drawing views layer mode. Drawing view layers mode. We didn't deserve chicken. Yeah, maybe that's what we need to do. So where do we do that? That's a question. Because I think this is currently only on, like this this whole on appear thing is only on layers mode. It's not religious. No. I mean, yeah, I guess that we just move this to drawing view. It's the wrong drawing view. This one. Got the group here. And then, so this would basically be not on appear. Yeah, we gotta just comment all of this out. And just get rid of that. Um, on change of editing state. Only can ducks allowed. Yeah. On change of editing state. Which is a thing that we do over on. Because here's the problem. It needs to be on change of editing state, but it almost needs to be on change of editing state dot mode. Is that even a thing? Can we get that to just work? You know? That'd be great. Uh, on up here. So this is if, yeah. Switch. Editing state dot mode. But I think we can pass it our like new value right drawing view editing mode underscore new state okay so yeah
new mode in. So switch, new mode. Case, layers. Case, editing, playing. So we need to start with that. Yeah, we need this in either case. Boop. I don't want to. I don't want to move it. I didn't want to copy it. I don't want to delete this. So either way, we need there to be a window scene. Perfect. Uh, if we're in new mode, we're gonna save the previous geometry. And we're gonna give ourselves new geometry preferences. Yeah, we'll just we'll just copy all of this. So if we're going to layers, do all of this. We need to save previous geometry somewhere. We need to save previous size somewhere. All good. We need access to our window. Okay. We'll figure that all out in a minute. Uh, here, this all goes in here. Except we don't need the guard let window scene because we've already got that part. So we just need to guard those two things. Okay. I think we can delete this now. So we need our previous geometry and our previous size, which we probably have on layers view, layers mode. We're going to get rid of them. Uh, states, yeah, 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 all of these. You're coming with me. Not, not twice. Not twice. You are coming with me. Okay. Uh, so this is now just whenever we change our editing state mode, we change the layout. That should fix that like weird hang up. That's fine. So we do that, then we do that. Hey, there we go. Okay, so that's better. We still don't have the match geometry effect though. That's a problem. I forgot that I turned on quacking mode. Ensure that both views you're animating with match geometry effect have the same ID and are using the same namespace. We should double check that it is in fact the same namespace. Check if the animation is being triggered properly. The with animation block should be wrapping the state change that causes the view to switch between the expanded and collapsed states. It is doing that. Consider the order of modifiers. SwiftUI evaluates modifiers in the order they are applied. If you have other modifiers that affect layouts such as frame, make sure they are in a logical order. Match geometry effects should typically become before sizing. Come before sizing modifiers. Interesting. Remember that debugging animations can sometimes be more of an art than a science. Quack. It often requires a bit of trial and error to get everything just right. Quack. Okay, so yeah, let's double check the namespace ID and then we'll start looking at messing with the modifier order. I don't like that part. Don't like that idea. But we'll, we'll deal with it. Uh, namespace. Editing layer. Blah. In namespace.
And then let's go do that in our layers mode. Namespace ID 280. Namespace ID 280. So it's not that. I really... I don't want to mess with these other things, but I will do it. I'll do it. That's fine. Match geometry effect. We want it to be on... I really want to stick this namespace in the, the environment so that I don't have to pass it down like three layers. Let's do that. Uh, let's call it like layer namespace environment key. I have an environment key somewhere. Environment key. Yeah, document store environment key. Tool picker environment key. That's probably the one that we actually care about. Or UI window environment key. These are all great. New file. That's weird. Namespace. Would it just be namespace.id? Can I do that? No. So because namespace is a property wrapper, I almost need to do that. That's super weird. Don't know that I love that. Can't, no. I was gonna say, can I just do at namespace static let default value? But no, it would have to be static var default value. I don't think it matters because this is just default value. But whatever. Extension, environment, values. Or, can I do this? Which is a terrible idea. But I want to do it anyway. Seems like the answer is no. That's fine. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I like built the app and I'm like, yeah, okay, good. We've, we've added this namespace. That's all we need to do. No, that's not all we need to do. It's absolutely not all we need to do. Uh, drawing view, we just want the drawing view. So let's get rid of the namespace call on these. Boop, 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 delete it. Delete that, delete that, get rid of that. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of the that right there. Okay, we're good there. Um, and then same deal over here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of probably something similar over here. Actually, let's. Let's, let's, let's just comment this one out for now because I think we're going to want that value in a minute. Drawing canvas, display canvas. Let's let's actually maybe just put it on drawing canvas. No, we're probably going to want to put it on all of them. Canvas view representable. This is not actually doing anything. I wonder if match geometry effect just doesn't work on UI view representables. That could be a problem.
Yeah, that was what I was worried about. So this may not work no matter what I do. I think we should keep going. But I have a feeling that this is just not going to work. Oh, this actually also doesn't even have the layer ID. It's fine. This one does. Display canvas does. Drawing canvas does not. Does display canvas do anything interesting? Also no. It said it should go before it's not working because the computer can sense fear. That sounds about right. Like a horse. At environment, layer namespace, private, ah, private var layer namespace. Layer dot ID in layer namespace. Same deal there. feeling this isn't going to work the way that I want it to. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm sad about it, but it's fine. Drawing V layer button. Uh, I almost think that this should go before the rotation effect. So maybe let's put a at environment layer namespace private var layer namespace. Yeah, let's put it after the hover effect, but before anything else. Match geometry effect, layer dot ID in layer namespace. And then we can put our print here, and we're gonna call this selectable layer. Extra argument namespace in call. Yep, fair enough. Uh, you know what else we're forgetting to do? We need to actually provide our namespace. Dot environment. Player namespace. Namespace. Let's try that. Namespace ID 280. That part still seems to work. All right, let's click it. Okay. That was close let's see what that looks like with a uh, Peter on it where is he oh, no have we lost Peter <gasps> no Peter no here he is I do think that there's uh, 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 definitely some um, shenanigans going on here. Uh, okay, so I'm thinking maybe we put this behind a feature flag and we commit it so that we know that we don't have the problems, but we, we turn it off by default. How about we do that? What are my environment values? FF display mode, FF new film strip. How do I end up using these? Process, process info. Okay, so I, these are pretty simple. Straightforward. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. 
I think, yeah, we need to add a feature flag thing into vision. Oh, we don't have that right now. Vision, app, sources, feature flag. And we're going to call this player animation. So we have the whole with animation block. Can we provide just nil? Looks like we can. So where is that? That's in layer button. Layer button. With animation. Animation. Wait, did that have an underscore on it or not? It did. Layer and uh, feature flag. Oh, this is in toolbar vision. Why you gotta be like that? We'll just get rid of this. We're just gonna just put it here. Just like the whole file. Okay, so if that's not turned on, we should now have no animation. Boop, boop. Okay, perfect. And then let's try it. Let's try actually turning that back on. Just that so we have that code there. Da 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 da. Build and run. Yeah, okay. So it is there. I think we're going to need more work on it but let's commit what we have so we don't lose it add animation effect to layers view this effect is behind the feature flag ff layer animation because it looks awful. Push it. And then we'll file a new issue to make this look better. I don't want to create a new issue. There was a way to do that. New related issue. There we go. The animation for 300 looks terrible. So we hid it behind the feature flag. Fix the animation. So we can show it. All right. I think that's going to be it for me tonight, everybody. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I will be back Wednesday evening. There's a chance I might be back tomorrow. I don't think so. My normal stream time is tomorrow, Monday evening. But, uh... Hey, thank you for the follow, silly tackle. Uh, yeah, my normal stream time is like 
22 hours from now, 20, 21 hours from now. But I think I will be at an event, and so I will not be here. So instead, it'll be 48 hours after that. Yeah, thank you, Adam Wolf. Thank you for pushing me to uh, actually uh, just just deal with the fact that I didn't like my view. But yeah, I, I did need to just get it out and ship it. So thank you, Mono. All right. Yep. Like I said, I will likely be back on Wednesday. Thank you all for watching. Have a great beginning of your week. And uh, hope to see you soon. Bye.